All right, so hopefully you were able to pick up on dividing with long division. Luckily, today we are going to look at kind of a sheet for that, which is synthetic division. Synthetic division is a way of simplifying long division by not having to use long division for every problem. So, in what order should you arrange the terms when you divide polynomials? We should always arrange our polynomials in what we call standard form. That's when you put the polynomials in order so that the first term is the highest to the lowest and the coefficient on that first term we call the leading coefficient. How do you determine where to place the first term in the quotient? So the first term in the quotient will always go above the first term in the dividend. The first term in the quotient goes above the first term in the dividend. So here's your dividend, divisor, first term of the quotient goes here. How do you know when you've finished dividing the polynomial? You know you've finished dividing the polynomial when you get um, down to one value in the long division process. So again, today is our third day of dividing polynomials and we're gonna use something called synthetic division. And synthetic division is the cheat to long division for polynomials. So, the trick though, and the reason we don't use synthetic division always is because synthetic division has kind of limitations. It only works in certain cases. And those cases are that there must be a coefficient for every possible power of the variable. And the second is, and this is the big one, this is the one that like, if this doesn't happen, then you are not able to use synthetic and you gotta go with long division. The divisor must have, and this is why we talked about standard form and leading coefficients, the divisor must have a leading coefficient of one and only one. So again, you have your dividend, over your divisor and what that means is that no matter what is happening down here the first value must be a one so there are some simple steps you write the coefficients of the dividend so the degrees are in descending order So what that means is we need these terms to have our degrees in descending order. And then if they are in descending order, then we are able to um, write down the coefficients. So what you're gonna do is simply write down two, negative 13, positive 26, negative 24. So cubed, quadratic, linear, constant. So that's step one, write the coefficients of the dividend. Step two, write the constant r of the divisor in the box to the left. And it is always going to be kind of like we did with quadratics, the opposite of what it is in the problem. So if this is x minus four, 
then the value in my box is positive 4. Step 3, you are going to bring down the first coefficient. So we are going to take that 2, negative 13, positive 26, negative 24, boxed 4 in the corner, and we're going to bring down the first term straight down. Step four is to multiply that first coefficient by the R term. So in this case, it's two times four, and that value goes under the negative 13 as an eight, because you take four times two, and then you write your answer in right there. Then what we're gonna do again is we add straight down. So negative 13 plus 8 is negative 5. Then you multiply that number in the box times negative 5, and you write it under the next term. So you get negative 20. You add those numbers together, so you get 6. You multiply 4 times 6 to get 24. Add those numbers together to get zero. We love zeros. Zeros make us happy. That means that this is the remainder. If there isn't a remainder, it means that this divides nicely, which actually means that this is a factor, and we're going to talk a lot more about that next week. But no remainders make us happy. So my final answer, and this is all the way down for you um, at step eight. So our step eight, because four through six is to repeat and do what we did. Step eight is to rewrite it as an answer like we were seeing um, for long division. So if this started as a cubed, then this is going to be one value less. So it'll be 2x squared now. So we take an x away because we divided x cubed by an x. Then this is our next term. So it's minus 5. And it's an x because it's losing a value of each variable as we go. So x squared, then x. And then plus 6 because there's no more x's left. And if it was something other than zero, then you would add your remainder over here. Let's try that again. So here you go. We have 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x plus 15 divided by x plus 3. So the leading coefficient of x is 1. So that says, yay, we can use synthetic. This goes x cubed, x squared, x linear, so we can also use synthetic. There's no holes or missing gaps. So we take the opposite of the value here. So if it's positive 3, my box gets negative 3. We're going to write down the coefficients of each of these four terms. So that's 2, 3, negative 4, 15. We're going to bring the 2 straight down. So 2 comes straight down. Then we multiply the box times that number. So you get negative 6. Add straight down. Negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Add straight down. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. Add straight down. Another remainder of 0. So once again, very happy. We can move on to the last part, which is simply to rewrite our answer with the variables back in it. So we started with x cubed divided by x. That means my answer is going to start with x squared 
then go to 3x, and then add a 5. So what's that called? This is once again called our quotient. This was our dividend, and this is my divisor. Vocabulary is key. Okay, coefficient of the first term of the divisor is one, so that's in check. X cubed, X squared, X 14, that's in check. So let's go. Three, negative eight, positive 11, negative 14, opposite value in the box, so, so minus two becomes positive two. Bring the first term straight down. Multiply box by that number, so you get six. Add them, negative two. Multiply, negative four. Add, seven. Multiply, 14. Add, zero. I can promise these examples were nice. They do not always end at a point where you have a remainder of zero. So highest term was cubed divided by x, so that becomes 3x squared minus 2x plus 7. Okay, leading coefficient of the divisor is 1. So we're going to take the opposite value of what's in the box, so that's negative 2. This goes a to the fourth, a squared, a, no a. What's missing between 4 and 2? 3. So this is a case, like with long division, where we have to add back a 0, a cubed. So we're going to include that 0a cubed for my coefficients. So it's going to go 4, 0, 2, negative 4, positive 12. Always bring down the first, multiply, add, multiply, Add, multiply, add, multiply, add, rewrite it so that your quotient has our variables back in our solution. So, this started as a to the fourth, and you divided it by a, so that makes this a cubed, 8a squared, plus 18a, minus 40, and that 92 is my remainder, so we take the remainder and we always add it and divide by the quotient, or sorry, by the divisor. So quotient plus remainder over divisor. So as per the usual, we're going to take that lesson and we're going to practice it on our own. Thank you.